This is AutoLine Daily, the show dedicated to enthusiasts of the global automotive industry. Here's something we didn't expect to see. Chinese oil refineries are refusing to refine Russian oil. And that could have a big impact on prices of gasoline at the pump. Reuters reports that China's government-owned refineries will not take on new contracts to process Russian oil. They'll fulfill existing contracts, but won't sign new ones despite the fact that Russia is offering deep discounts. The Chinese refineries are afraid of getting slammed with sanctions if it looks like they're helping Russia. But if Russia is cut off from most of the market and China turns to other sources to buy oil, gasoline prices will not be coming down anytime soon. Meanwhile, car production in Russia is grinding to a halt and thousands of workers are losing their jobs. One city called Kaluga, which is about 120 miles away from Moscow, has been hit especially hard. It has assembly plants for Volkswagen, Volvo, and a joint venture between Stellantis and Mitsubishi. About 7,000 auto workers there are now out of work. Many of them seem to be naive about the global backlash over Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Reuters quotes one marketing executive at a VW dealership as saying, she hopes everything will soon get back to normal. And should Volkswagen change its name? As you know, Volkswagen means people's car. But now it sounds like it's going to be the car for people with high income. The company's finance chief says VW is going to start selling fewer vehicles and will concentrate on premium vehicles that bring in higher profits. To get there, it's going to slash the number of models and trim lines that it offers. VW plans to get rid of 60% of its gas and diesel vehicles across all of its brands over the next eight years in Europe. Instead of volume and market share, it's going after margins. And as we pointed out in our comparison of R&D spending between the car companies, VW spends more on new model development than any other car company. It spent over $17 billion last year, or about the same as Toyota and General Motors put together. Mobility is becoming electric, connected, and autonomous, just like the manufacturing world. But we'll always be one thing, a reliable partner for our customers. Mercedes is showing that there's still life left in the internal combustion engine. This is the new entry-level version of the Mercedes AMG SL, the SL43. While we've shown you the new SL in the past, there's something a bit special with this model. And like most AMGs, it's got to do with what's under the hood. In this case, it's a 2-liter turbocharged 4-cylinder engine. Doesn't sound all that special. But this engine features something no other production car in the world has, according to Mercedes, an electric turbocharger. It's tech that Mercedes developed over the years in Formula One and will now use in a production vehicle. The electric motor is mounted between the intake and exhaust side of the turbocharger and uses the 48-volt electrical system to spool up before the exhaust gases start to drive the compressor wheel. This gets rid of turbo lag and allows for more torque at lower revs, as well as the ability to hold boost even when off the gas, so there's an immediate response when you get back on it again. The setup produces over 380 horsepower, which is really impressive for a four-cylinder production car. It's all fed through a nine-speed automatic that sends power to the rear wheels and drives this convertible from 0 to 100 kilometers an hour in 4.9 seconds. Big news in Germany today, as Chinese battery maker Cattle is getting set to open its first cell manufacturing plant outside of China. Cattle broke ground on the $2 billion plant in 2019 and is now in the final stages of construction. While it can begin cell production, it still needs approval for another building to assemble the cells into modules. Once it's all up and running, the plant will produce 14 gigawatt hours annually. And in other battery maker news, 
LG Energy Solution is being investigated by NHTSA over battery defects that can lead to fire risks. The probe includes GM Chevy Bolt recall, but NHTSA cited five other recalls from Smart, Hyundai, Volkswagen, and Stellantis that it is looking into. NHTSA wants to notify other automakers that use LG batteries about any potential defects and have them issue recalls if it's necessary. LG says it's fully cooperating with the investigation. NIO isn't the only Chinese EV startup selling vehicles in Europe. A company called AI Ways offers the U5 SUV, and it will soon launch a new model called the U6. Its design is previewed here with a concept called the U6 Ion, which is said to be pretty close to the production model. It features a coupe-like silhouette, a shark nose front end like so many other electric SUVs, and a yoke steering wheel with the top chopped off of it. In a quick search, we weren't able to find many details on the model, but the U6 is expected to come out in the third quarter of this year, so we should learn more soon. We want to know what drives your testing. OTA, connected car, diagnostics, remote testing, Intrepid Control Systems is here to help you work from anywhere. Intrepid Control Systems, driven by your data. EV startup Canoe is struggling. It's under SEC investigation, and more than 50 employees have left the company this year. But it just got a bit of a boost. Bloomberg reports that NASA is picking it to build a vehicle to transport astronauts to the launch pad for upcoming missions. The contract is worth nearly $150,000, and Canoe will make at least one vehicle. NASA requested that it be zero emissions, have a range of at least 50 miles, and seat up to eight people. The vehicle is scheduled to be delivered in June of 2023 and will be used for Artemis missions that start in 2024. Did you know that Stellantis owns a robotics company? Most people don't. It's called Kamau, and it makes all kinds of industrial equipment. It just came out with a new robot called N220 that can lift up to 450 pounds, and with six-axis articulation, it can move that load in any direction. But strangely, Stellantis never talks about Kamau. The company is not even mentioned in its latest annual report. And that makes us wonder if Carlos Tavares, the CEO of Stellantis, is thinking about selling the operation. If he can find a buyer, that money could be invested to the car and truck side of the business as it transitions to electric. Have you ever heard of the Shift Group? You've probably seen their trucks and didn't even know it. Shift is a specialty manufacturer that makes trucks for specific applications. Everything from service and delivery trucks to the chassis for motorhomes. And now it's coming out with an electric van called Blue Arc with 150 miles of range. And we've got Daryl Adams, the CEO of the Shift Group, coming on Autoline After Hours tomorrow to talk all about it. And then don't forget, we have Mark Royce, the president of General Motors, coming on next week to talk all about GM's EV strategy. We're even going to devote part of that show to viewer questions, and we've already started compiling the list. So if you've got a question you'd like to pose to Mark Royce about GM's EV plans, post it in the comments section or send an email to viewermail at autoline.tv. But that brings us to the end of today's show. Please like, comment, and or subscribe. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone, solutions for your journey. Intrepid Control Systems, over-the-air engineering, boost your game. And by Scheffler, we pioneer motion.